Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Nolan N105 and N105 Plus helmets. This is Nolan's top of the range flip front helmet, although I'm kind of covering two lids in one review here as there's the N105 and also this N105 Plus. There's very little difference between the two helmets. This is the Plus model, which has a better lining that I'll explain in a bit. Otherwise, the two helmets have exactly the same construction, so there's really no point in making two separate videos. Now, I've had a lot of respect for Nolan helmets for a good while now, and this helmet has only enhanced my regard for what they do in the time that I've spent with it. It's made with a plastic shell, and Nolan have used a high-quality polycarbonate called Lexan since Nolan were first founded 50 years ago, and the overall build quality on this helmet is typically good. The plastic shell does mean this helmet isn't exactly a lightweight. This size medium N105 Plus comes in at 1,754 grams on our scales. But before I get too carried away about the plastic shell being the cause of the weight, let's put some perspective on that. The X1005 flip front that's made by Nolan's sister company X-Lite has a composite fiber shell and that weighs almost exactly the same as this helmet. It was actually one gram heavier than this Nolan. And in the time that I spent wearing this helmet, it didn't once feel like I was wearing a heavy lid, but sometimes a heavier lid is fine if it's well balanced. And that's how I felt when I was wearing this one. So the chin bar on this follows Nolan's usual system with a two stage release. Pushing the lower of the two switches away from the chin bar releases this upper switch. Then you pinch the two together and that frees the chin bar mechanism. Now, some people will say that's fiddly compared to helmets with the chin bar releases on one button. I can't really argue it is a bit more fiddly but Nolan have a brilliant record when it comes to their chin bars staying closed in the impact tests that are carried out as part of the UK government's sharp tests. The testers for that sharp test note down any impacts that make the chin bar open up and Nolan has a 100% success rate. None of their lids have ever opened up in a sharp impact. And it's the same story for X-Lite and Grex helmets, which are Nolan's two sister brands. And they use the same two-stage setup for their operation here. The way the chin bar opens also keeps the helmet compact. It doesn't just flip up as it raises, it flips back at the same time thanks to an elliptical trajectory. So when the chin bar is lifted, the tip here at the chin sits barely proud of the front of the helmet at all, giving it a better shape when you're using it with the chin bar raised. And it's legal to do that thanks to the dual homologation of the helmet. It's tested as both an open face with the chin bar up and as a full face with it down. And there's a slider on the side here that locks the chin bar up and that means it's a fully tested open face lid. Then when you lower the chin bar, it locks shut with a satisfying clunk. The venting on the helmet is pretty impressive and comprehensive. The slider on the chin bar reveals a vent that draws air up to the inner surface of the visor and around the eye port. And then there's another slider on top that pulls air inside the helmet. It doesn't seem to be a direct route from shell to your head, but it seems as though air can travel between two sections of the EPS impact liner, which cools that material down as it travels through channels towards exhaust vents at the rear. They, those exhaust vents at the back, they're permanently open, which is becoming the increasingly common method for helmets now. The visor for this helmet is effective. It gives plenty of peripheral vision and it's protected against mist by a pin lock insert, which is fitted as standard, which saves you another fiddly job. If you ever do need to mess around with the insert or to clean it, the visor is really easy to remove and replace. And anyway, there are really simple adjusters on the outside here to tune the pin lock tension without it being too fiddly. The visor has five stages on its journey from top to bottom. And then it takes just a little extra push to secure it on its central tab. The penultimate stage of the movement leaves it slightly open so you can just get a little bit more air on the inside. That main visor is backed up by a sun visor, which also closes in stages. There are four steps. And then it has Nolan's speedy retraction setup, where pushing this button retracts the visor in one simple motion. That sun visor follows the norm for Nolan. It's anti-fog treated. So I personally suffer quite a lot with visor misting. So having that anti-fog coated is an important feature for someone like me. Switch into the inside of this helmet, this is another area where Nolan often stand out from the crowd. Whether you go for the Plus model like this or the straight N105, you get a pleasant soft foam lining that's really comfortable next to your skin. It fits securely into the helmet and it's fully removable for washing. If you go for the N105 Plus, then you can adjust the lining so the helmet sits on your head at a different angle. It's got what's called Nolan's liner positioning control. And if you adjust the tabs on the inside so they're closer together, the helmet tilts a little bit forward on your head, 
If you keep them further apart, the helmet will sit more neutrally on top of your head. With the Plus, there's also a net section at the top of the liner to allow some extra airflow around the top of your head. So I've pulled the liners out from the two helmets so I can show you the difference between the two. This is the N105 Plus, this is the N105. So the cheaper helmet has a mesh bit, mesh part around here, which is just above the eye section, just here. This one's got a synthetic leather. There's the mesh section at the top, the net that I was telling you about on the Plus, while on this one you've got just straight fabric around there, and then the liner positioning control is in here. So it's adjusting those tabs there that alters the angle slightly on the head. So that is changed slightly between the N105 and the M105 Plus. And then there's also a modification on the cheek pads. The Plus has this extra section around the base of the cheek pad as opposed to just a straight cheek pad that you get on the N105. And what this does is it just acts a little bit as an extra protection against wind because you've got a slightly closer fit around the neck just here on the Plus. Okay, so those are the differences between the straight helmet and the Plus. I'll move those out of the way and let's carry on with the rest of the lid. So, other than the two liners, there's absolutely no difference between the two helmets. It's just those to think about. In terms of the two helmets behind the lining, there are recesses to allow speakers to fit in there comfortably. This helmet is set up for Nolan's Encom systems, or you should be able to fit a Senna Universal system, if you like, because Senna make the Encom units for Nolan. If you've already got a Cardo system, then you may be out of luck. The recesses in this are too small for the speakers on the Cardo Pack Talk Bold that I tried to fit into this lid. So if you've got Cardo, you have to hope there's enough room between the helmet and your ears for the speakers to fit in there comfortably, worth checking for sure. Finally, with the interior, the strap fastener. It's a micrometric quick release buckle. It's probably as you'd expect with a flip front helmet. But as with the chin bar mechanism, there's an extra layer of security on this fastener. The red part of the release tab here has to pivot before the gray part, this section here, can then be pulled open to release its grip on the toothed slider. Again, Nolan say this reduces the chances of that fastener accidentally opening, and it's hard to disagree with the logic on that. So let's move on to sizing and approvals. The N105 and N105 Plus both meet ECE 2205 for use on the road in dual homologation form, as I said earlier. There's no ACU gold stamp, so if you're that rare beast who wants a flip front helmet for competition use, then you've just watched all of this for no reason. This helmet has, however, been tested by Sharp. It scored four stars out of five, which is a really solid score. And as anyone who was listening earlier will be fully expecting me to say, the chin bar stayed closed in all of the impacts that are carried out as part of the Sharp tests. When it comes to sizing, the N105 and the Plus are available in sizes ranging from double extra small to triple extra large. There are two shell sizes to cover those range of helmet sizes. So helmet sizes medium and below share the smaller shell and lid sizes from large and above go into that bigger shell. But there are six different thicknesses of EPS impact liner, so the smaller helmet size aren't just chock full of thicker comfort padding to fill up that space. The two smallest lids share an EPS thickness, as do the two biggest lids in that range. So that means everything from small to extra large has its own EPS liner size, which helps to ensure a decent fit and also the proper level of protection. So anyway, I'll best wrap up now, I suppose. You might have picked up that I like this helmet and you'd be right. When I wore it, it felt comfortable for my head shape, Mine's as broad as it is long, it felt safe, and it wasn't noisy on the Yamaha Tracer 9 GT I had at the time, although I have to point out, I do always wear earplugs. It's not a cheap flip front. This helmet costs from 299 pounds and up for the straight N105, and a plus model is 359 pounds 99, although you might find a discount on an old paint scheme if you're looking at the right time of year. But the really headline flip front helmets like Shoei and Schubert are 500 quid or more now, so for 200 pounds or so less than that, I think a helmet like this is well worth looking at before you make a final decision. As for whether to pay the extra for the Plus model over the straight N105, that really is down to your budget. The lining is definitely superior on the Plus, and it costs around £30 extra to go for that lining when you're looking at a like-for-like like on the paint schemes. And really, like I said, it's down to your budget on whether it's important enough to you to spend that extra 30 quid. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Nolan N105 and N105 Plus helmets. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.